Once upon a time, in the land of petri dishes and microscopes, lived an evolutionary biologist with dreams bigger than his lab. Our man of science, let's call him Dr. Hyde, harbored a secret passion that had nothing to do with DNA sequencing or evolutionary theories. No, his heart beat to the rhythm of a different drum. Dr. Hyde dreamed of being a rock star, strumming the electric guitar with a swagger that would make Mick Jagger blush. He imagined himself on a stage, not a lab, surrounded by cheering fans, not nerdy colleagues. But the more he fantasized about this other life, the more he became a jackal and hide of sorts. His excitement would bubble up, and just like a classic rock song, it would always end with a surprising and, well, stinky twist. And so, every time his heart pounded with the rhythm of the drums, his stomach responded with a symphony of its own. Surrounded by lab coats and safety goggles, our biologist was more out of place than a pigeon at a black tie event. Picture it, a world of pocket protectors, pencil pushers and periodic tables where the wildest party involves an explosive chemical reaction. Our biologist, with a heart full of rock and roll, was like a zebra in a herd of horses, conspicuous and a tad bit confused. The nerds he was surrounded by were more interested in the mysteries of the universe than in the mysteries of a good old-fashioned rave. Their idea of fun was deciphering complex DNA sequences, not deciphering the lyrics of a head-banging rock anthem. He tried to fit in, of course, but every time he attempted to discuss the fascinating world of RNA sequencing, his nervous stomach would betray him, letting out a loud, stinky protest against the nerdy conversation. The more he tried to blend in with the nerds, the more his stomach protested, punctuating the silence with its own loud opinion. In the desperate hope of finding a mate, our biologist decided to shake things up. Enter the mullet. There's a certain je ne sais quoi to the mullet, isn't there? A bold statement of non-conformity, a dash of wildness, a sprinkle of rebellion, or so our biologist thought. He imagined himself strutting around the university, his mullet shimmering under the fluorescent lights, his colleagues gasping in awe. He'd be the cool professor, the one everyone wanted to hang out with. But alas, reality seldom matches our dreams. Instead of gasps of awe, there were snickers. Instead of admiration, there were raised eyebrows. And instead of attracting a mate, he attracted, well, let's just say he became a magnet for airborne debris. His colleagues, those nerds he'd hoped to impress, reacted the worst. They slapped him on the head, kicked him, and laughed at his expense. And every time they did, his traitorous gut would betray him, letting out a sound that would echo across the hallways. Yes, our biologist had a case of the nervous farts. Not exactly the rock star image he'd hoped for, was it? But our biologist was nothing, if not persistent. He soldiered on, braving the taunts and the kicks and the occasional unexpected shower when he ventured outdoors. But every time he tried to strut his new look, his traitorous stomach would let out a sound louder than his self-confidence. Despite the slaps, the kicks and the mullet, our biologist was about to learn a life-changing lesson. And there he was, standing in the midst of his lab, surrounded by beakers and test tubes, the smell of chemicals in the air, and his heart pounding to the rhythm of an unplayed rock anthem. He had tried to be something he was not. He had tried to fit into a mold, to be the life of the party, a rock star. But the truth was, he was not a rock star. He was a scientist, a nerd, a lover of the microscopic world. It was in this moment of realization that he let out a sigh of relief. A sigh so potent that it reverberated through the lab with a sound suspiciously like, well, you've guessed it, another bout of flatulence. He chuckled to himself, realizing how absurd he must have looked, trying to squeeze his nerdy self into tight leather pants and a mullet. What was he thinking? He was a rock star, not on a stage with a guitar, but on a lab bench with a microscope. He embraced his true self, his nerdy side, realizing that he didn't need to change who he was to be happy. He was a rock star in his own right, in his own field, rocking the world of evolutionary biology. In the end, he realized that he was not a rock star, but a rock star in his own right. And every time he remembered this, his stomach would chime in with a resounding, Amen! <laughs>